Hi folks, it's Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry. Hi, here I am. Today I'm gonna to show you how I take the citrus that I dehydrated. You can see the video that I just did. I'll leave a link down in the description box below and it should pop up in your iCards right about now. And I'm gonna make some citrus powder. You can do this with individual citrus. You can do orange powder, you can do lemon powder, lime powder, grapefruit powder, whatever you'd like. But today we're doing like a little version of Sprite, which is lemon and lime. And then what I'm gonna do is show you how to clean your coffee grinder if you use one that does not have a removable cup to help you clean it out a little better because this is gonna get just a little bit messy that could be hard to clean out if your cup is not removable, which I know a lot of you have some older uh, or one piece coffee grinders and sometimes they can be a real pain to clean. So I'm gonna give you a little tip today on how to clean that. So are you ready to get started? Here I have some uh, powder that I did a little while ago. And what I've also done is I've left out these uh, lemon and lime citrus slices that I did last year. I've left them out for a little while to get a little soft so that you can see more of what the gunk might be in your machine. Um, that, you know, when it's softer and a little wet and a little oily and a little with all the sugars in it, it can cause a bit of a problem. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips on grinding them on drying them and storing them. I don't know why I did that because I don't have a lid on it. I am just silly this morning. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few of my slices and pop them into my grinder. It will help if you break them up a little bit so that it doesn't have to work quite so hard in the beginning because it's trying to grab those huge pieces and sort of break through them when having some smaller ones it can grab onto a little better. Something else I do, if I have it, I will seed it with a little powder from before. Because what this does is it allows there just to be some volume in there for it to work. That's just something I do. Put that on correctly. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and start grinding. And you wanna pulse. Don't just push it down and try to let it go. That's how you burn out a motor. Pulse it. And yes, mine is going to start spitting out a lot of uh, stuff on the bottom. Evidently, these come with a lid that you can put on the top to stop that, but mine didn't. And I've never gone back to try to find one uh, or, you know, try to get a new one for it. So I'm going to have a little mess, but I've got some cleanup to do, and that's fine. I'm used to it. Now, as you get this broken up some, then you can go ahead and push straight down and just let it go. Now, this is nowhere near ready, but I just wanted you to see, there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a few more pieces. Okay, here we go some more. We're getting there. See that? When you think you've gotten about as far as you can go, get a small, I mean a fine mesh strainer like this. Okay, you want really tiny spots. And we're gonna go ahead and sift this out. See how it, oh, I'm sorry about that. But see how it clumps down there? You can see you can see how it sticks to the blade, and in a smaller coffee grinder, you may get a lot of gunk up under that blade that's hard to clean when you can't put it in water. But you can see here, these clumps, they are not, they are fine powder. The thing is, is that when you start getting it hot, you've got moisture that's in there, you've got oils that have been uh, expanded, you've got sugars that are just going, yay, it's warm and I'm gonna get bigger. And so you have clumping that happens. So what you can do is you can just push this through a strainer. And then you see you've got the bigger pieces. They can just go in a second time. And please know, yes, this is going to be a bit messy today, and that's just the way it is. So what I'm going to do now is add a few more of these pieces and do this one more time. So 
see how that's working. Now you've got a lot of buildup on the inside of your machine, right on the inside of your grinder right here. Uh, you might find that in yours you have a ton of buildup right under that blade. Um, I'm going to go ahead, because I can, scoop out all this powder. Because we do not want to let it go to waste if we can possibly help it. You can use a uh, any kind of silicone brush for basting. You can use a pastry brush. You can use, you know, whatever kind of brush you have. I happen to have, I grabbed these at um, Hobby Lobby on clearance one day. When I thought, hey, that will help me clean my coffee grinder. The first one I had was really a mess. And then it started helping doing all of this. So you can get whatever you'd like, okay? I'm going to just brush this off real quick. Because again, if you cannot waste it, don't. And yes, this, I really, really need to find a lid for this thing. It would save me a whole lot of heartache and clean up. But use what you got. Not waste money on something I don't need to buy. Because this works fine. It just takes a few minutes to clean it up. Alright, so we're going to leave that there. Alright, clean out the lid. There's the super fine powders. I'll show you this bowl in just a second when I'm done. Now your particular grinder, I'm gonna leave that gunk in there so we can show what happens in a minute. Um, gunk, it's not really gunk, I'm sorry I'm using that word, but um, your grinder, whatever you're using, uh, my Vitamix uh, would do a little better and so would my bullet blender. Um, so I have a little bit left over. Most of this is pulp, okay? And I'm not gonna keep it um, because that's the bitter part. I mean, there is some zest in here as well. But I am really not going to fuss over this. So here is the powder. It's really fine. But it can be a little clumpy because those sugars are expanded. There's moisture from the heat. Uh, there's all sorts of things that make it a little bit um, clumpy. So we're going to take care of that in just a minute. One thing I wanted to mention why some of these grinders will make a big mess like this when you're, when you're using them. These were created to grind coffee beans, not to grind fine powders like fruit powders and vegetable powders. So that you might find that you make a bigger mess when you're doing these finer powders, but that's okay. It can clean up. So what I've done is I turn my oven on to its lower temp lowest temperature. Mine happens to be 170 and I'm going to allow it to preheat. So as it's warming up the inside of the oven, we're going to get this ready to dry. Now, this is prob there's probably a better name for this, but I kind of call this conditioning powder. Um, the same way that you would condition your fruits and vegetables before you store them. Um, we're going to do this with the powder as well because we want to make sure the powder is absolutely clean. Absolutely clean. Of course it's clean. Uh, I want to make sure it's absolutely dry so that I'm not putting this powder into um, a container when it might be still wet. Uh, not wet. Moist because of the way that everything has expanded and, it, and the moisture you're introducing by having it out and messing with it all the time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to pour this on a piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet, okay? Then I'm gonna let it spray out as much as I can. And this parchment paper is going to make it easier for me to put it into a container when we're all done. So we're gonna spread this out. Good and ready. All right, into the oven it goes. Into a turned off oven it goes. So what I what I do is I preheat my oven to 170, whatever the lowest temperature of your oven will go. I usually let mine set for about 15, 20 minutes, however it works. Okay, so amongst all the mess that I've made here at my countertop so far, what we're gonna do now is if you happen to have one of these coffee grinders that you cannot remove the cup, okay? So it's an all-in-one piece and you're hesitant to just throw this under running water um, because it's electric and you don't necessarily want to ruin it. Um, here is a tip. When you're going to clean these, take some rice, ordinary rice, pour it inside your cup. Rice acts as a little bit of a desiccant. 
It acts as an agitator. It acts as a scrubber on the sides. Now it's not gonna thin this grinder as well because this grinder also throws out a lot of powder on the outside. Uh, but this shows you how you can do yours and it's gonna work much better for you. So inside we go. Now, start the grind again. Obviously, it's not gonna clean the lid. So we have some rice flour here. And you can see how much better it cleaned out the inside of this from what it was before. Now I can run it some more because I see a little bit on the edge down there. Or at this point, because you've given all of that rice flour, it will make everything a little easier to go in there and brush out, okay? One of the reasons why this isn't gonna clean the side so well is that this has a lot of, um, the inside has some etching on it already from the way it was created and plus you know seeds and everything that I've done. But that's how you can get the inside of your grinder clean without putting it into water. Um, you can use salt if you want. Um, and then what do I do with this rice flour after? This rice flour can be used to thicken things. Uh, it'll have a little bit of a citrus flavor to it because it's got little citrus pieces in it. Um, but you can use it to put it into soup. You can uh, do any kind of thing with it. You don't have to throw it out. All right, so next we get on with the powder and storage. All right, here we go. Here is our powder. And it looks a little different than it went in when you saw it because I added my, uh, my, my excess powder from before to go ahead and dry it out so I can combine these two together. Now what you're gonna see when you do this is you're gonna touch this and think, that's not dry, that's actually all clumped in one hard piece. But the thing is, it's not. It's just the way it dries, it starts to settle. So what you wanna do at this point, you wanna let it just cool off. Now, if you're in a really high humid state right now, I would just let it cool off in the oven uh, and just let it sit there until it's completely cool, until you're ready to go because the oven's gonna protect it from most moisture because you don't have a lot of air coming into it all the time. Um, if you're in a low humid environment, you can go ahead and pull it out. It will dry, it will cool off faster sitting out here. Um, you can just always just leave it in there until the, the oven cools off and that's fine if you don't have use for your oven. Um, but I'm about to make breakfast, so I need it. So here is your powder when you're all done. Now, as you see, it looks like it is going to pop up like crazy, and it's not. Um, this is a little heat. It is a little um, compaction, but you'll see as you run your fingers through it and just break up all those clumps, it is back to just really, really gorgeous powder. So all you have to do now, and I wish you could smell, it's like citrus, uh, just it's like super, super citrusy right now. So I'm gonna sit here and just break all this up the best that I can get it. Now how to use this? All right, I'm gonna leave you a link that does it way better than I do uh, about a ton of different ways that you can use citrus powder uh, in all fruit powders, in fact, and then just, you know, find one that works for you. You can add this to uh, icing. Like if you're gonna make a quick icing for um, orange bread, you can add some citrus powder or orange powder if you'd like into the icing that you're gonna put on it. You can add some powder into the batter to make it even more orange flavored. Um, you can use this to rim a cocktail along with some sugar. Use this to flavor oatmeal and yogurt, uh, put it in muffins. Um, gosh, there's just so many ways, but I'm gonna leave you a link to that post down below because it makes it, it I've just got a whole bunch of them listed about ways you can use this. Now you're gonna ask me, is this bitter? Um, it's citrus. It's going to be just a little bitter. It's not going to be as sweet as you think. And yes, because there is pith involved in here, the pith takes away a little bit of the sweetness, uh, but it is not bitter as if you were eating a piece of pith. All that flesh that's there and the zest and the pith all kind of combine together to make a citrus powder, a flavor, depending on what citrus you're doing. So it is, uh, it's not overly bitter like you might think it would be because you have pith in it. So don't, don't worry about that. However, if you don't want to even chance it, you want to do this without the pith, you can grind just the flesh. You will come out with much less powder. Um, you can have zested it beforehand, taken all the zest off, slice it all up, dry it, remove the pith, and then grind just that fleshy part on the inside. So here we go. Are we ready? This is cooled off. It is mostly clump free. I'm okay with a few little clumps because who has time to sit here and make it perfect? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I have a freshly washed and dried, uh, freshly washed and dried jar. I'm going to put this on the tray. I'm going to add my super helper, my little funnel. It's a wide mouth funnel, so it just fits perfectly into a jar like this and makes it easier for you to do this. I'm going to make a little 
funnel out of my uh, paper and then I'm going to pour it in. And there I have nice fresh what I like to call Sprite powder. Now for storage. I would typically tell you to add some arrowroot powder to keep this from clumping. However, because you're gonna be using this in things that you don't want to have any um, thickener into, into the thing. So let's say that you put some arrowroot powder into here, then you put this in tea, it's gonna cloud up your tea even more and actually makes it a little thick because arrowroot powder works as a thickener. So I don't add it to my fruit powders. Um, but what I do is I add a moisture absorber right on top to help with clumping. I have an airtight container. This is good for about six to nine months. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about doing these, please leave comments down below and I will answer your question at any point. And if you still need to see the video on how to make citrus, dried citrus, I'll have that up in the link cards below. And it'll also be right here for um, your enjoyment. And I will see you next time. Happy dehydrating.